Going in strictly chronological order, we would probably want to begin our investigation of the New World colonizers with the Spanish. Eventually, the Spanish would come to dominate an extremely large swath of the Western Hemisphere, depicted by the red on this image. Now, some students, they learn in high school to think of the three G's when they think of the Spanish colonization of the New World. Those three G's are gold, God, and glory. When they arrived, however, they did not particularly treat the Indians that they encountered as very well. Already devastated by disease, they faced new stresses, new traumas, and new murder at the hands of Spanish conquistadors who came over to the New World, hopeful of making their fortunes there, many of whom were second sons who had not inherited property in Spain and would not be going into the clergy either. They hoped to expand their wealth, their fortune, their power by setting up large domains in New Mexico, or New Spain rather, which became Mexico eventually. Of course, this was the beginning of the Spanish conquest, and it was a conquest that was marked by terrible violence set upon by Indians. Um, and this was a, there was the large amount of violence which did accommodate the, accompany the Spaniards into the New World, made it into the larger knowledge of Europe. The so-called Black Legend, or La Leyenda Negra, was the propaganda campaign conducted by other European countries to depict the unimaginable cruelty Spaniards carried out in their conquest of the Indies, or the Americas, but it was also to their own advantage because they were hoping to usurp Spanish power in the New World and thought that by doing a campaign that discredited their arrival in the New World and depicted the acts of wanton violence against Native Americans, the sort of public opinion in Europe would turn against them. In response, the Spanish friar Bartolomé de las Casas wrote the scathing Conquest of the Indies in 1527 to describe the first hand how he had witnessed the brutalities that Spain had visited upon the Native American population in the New World. Now, Bartolomé de las Casas was no ordinary friar, a member of the church. He was a former encomendero. He had returned to Spain after accompanying Cortes to New Spain in his conquest of Tenochtitlan and the former Aztec Empire. And in his account, he accused the Spaniards of abusing the Indians. He said they were not taking the religious education of the Native Americans seriously. And remember that the second G, Gold, God, and Glory, is about trying to convert as many Native Americans as the Spaniards possibly could to the Catholic religion. Now, I should also mention, at this time, the Catholic Church was particularly under siege because of the Reformation. The Reformation, begun in the 15th century, was when a number of churches, which we now refer to as the Protestant churches, broke away from the Catholic Church. Right? These Protestant religions today are as diverse as Lutherans, Calvinists, Baptists, Quakers, and the list goes on and on and on. But they had only recently broken away from the Catholic Church when the Spaniards started colonizing the New World. So in battling for the souls of the, of the Native Americans, the Spanish Church was hoping to convert the millions, or tens of thousands at least, of Native Americans that the Spaniards encountered in the New World into the Catholic religion, which of course would grow the power influence of the Church itself. So what the conquest of the Indies does is it indicts the Spaniards for not only um, treating the Indians so terribly, but also not taking seriously the mission to spread religious education amongst the Native Americans. And at the root of De Las Casas' complaint is that many of the conquistadores who had accompanied the um, conquerors into the New World had simply amassed too much power for themselves, turning the Indians into... Uh, making them work on the encomienda, which was a system of labor somewhat akin to slavery. Okay, So in 1542, at the behest of his wife, uh, Isabel, Charles V passed the new laws, provoking rebellion in New Spain. These new laws were about reining in the behavior of the Spaniards who had ruthlessly preyed upon the labor of Native Americans, forcing them to give up a portion of their time every month 
to go work on the Spaniards' estates. No longer were they supposed to do this. And of course, why is it that the Spanish royalty was so interested in passing these new laws which were set to stop the abuse of the Native American population? Well, as we have already seen, because they wanted to take seriously the church's mission in the New World to convert Native Americans to the Catholic religion. Um, it was to fight a propaganda campaign started by other European countries who were jealous of Spain's domination of the New World. And finally, the new laws meant to mitigate the worst behavior of the Spanish conquistadores was meant to protect Native Americans, who they hoped to convert into Spanish subjects, but also to control the unruly conquistadores, these people who had accompanied Cortes and the other conquerors as they came to the New World and beset themselves upon the Native Americans, taking over their cities, looking for their gold, and trying to amass glory, property, power, and wealth for themselves. Eventually, what ends up happening is that the crown takes the side of the Indians and separates them from the Europeans, and at least in places where they had control or they had a vision of what was going on in the colonial world, the, the royalty could reign in the worst behavior of the Spaniards. That wasn't necessarily true at the frontier, but at least in Mexico City, the worst behavior of the Spaniards would now be reined in, and Indians would no longer be forced to work on the encomienda, you know, as practically as slaves for the Indians. Now, how did the Spaniards supplement their labor shortage? By bringing in African slaves to do the work that former Indian encomenderos had done before the new laws of 1542. Hence, black slavery replaced Indian tribute labor. Of course, Indians were still expected to pay a tax to the Spaniards, and the vice royalties and the audencias, the royal bureaucrats established by the Spaniards, would watch over the behavior of the Spanish colonies in every major area. Slowly, Spaniards began to develop haciendas, which were large landed estates, which relied upon Indian labor, but not necessarily using the old encomendero system. Now let's pivot to the arrival of Spaniards in what is today the United States of America, or particularly the southwest of the United States of America. This land was part of the Spanish Empire. In 1528, the Entrada, made by Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca, made his way back to Mexico City, and only he and four others had survived an absolutely disastrous expedition in 1528. But they had, quote-unquote, discovered Florida for the Spanish Empire, as well as Louisiana, and even into Texas. And they told of stories of great cities of gold that could be found in the north. De Soto followed shortly thereafter, going to Florida, looking for the fabled Fountain of Youth. Coronado followed, exploring what is today the American West all in search of the lost cities of gold, the Fountain of Youth, or other such outrageous rumors that spread amongst the conquistadores as they explored what is today the Western Hemisphere, the continents of North and South America. Now, the first permanent Spanish-European settlement in what is today the United States was established in Florida in 1565. The reason that the Spaniards established themselves in Florida at St. Augustine was because French pirates in the Caribbean were absolutely rampant, and the Spaniards hoped to take advantage of Florida's location to try and scare off some of the French pirates who were preying upon the many shipments of Spanish gold, silver, and hacienda plantation crops back to the Old World. Um, there was a lot of money to be made in piracy, so St. Augustine was established to try and scare off the French pirates and to, of course, salvage any shipwrecks that might have been lost at sea going back to the Spaniards, and basically just to protect the sea lanes for the Spanish colonies. The Spaniards also started to establish missions. Missions were intended to protect against the English and the French, who were making encroachments in the New World and the poorly guarded nether regions of the Spanish Empire, but also to, once again, carry out the mission of trying to Christianize Native Americans. And as far as the continental United States is concerned, the Spaniards built missions in Florida. They even established a failed mission in Virginia. They established missions along what is today the Rio Grande. Eventually, they would establish missions in India and California as well. 
The aim of the mission was for unarmed priests to bring the Native Americans together to become Catholic and to instill in them good Christian values, to learn to work, pray, and prostrate themselves before God. The most, probably the most successful areas of missionization for the Spanish occurred in the old Pueblo population centers, where they did accept military protection <clears throat> when the dangers of their situation became clear. The Pueblo were surrounded by Apache Indians. Apaches had adapted to the horse, an animal which arrived with the Spaniards, and the Apaches used the horse and new metal weapons to make war upon their neighbors. So what did the neighbors do? They began to conglomerate together into larger settlements to protect themselves from horseback raiders. And when the Spanish arrived, they relied upon them to build walls and around the mission churches that would protect them from raiding Indians. And of course, the Spanish also started bringing their own soldiers up to protect against raiding Indians or French or English who might have started to arrive in the area that Spain was claiming when what is today the, the Southwest, particularly the state of New, what is today the state of New Mexico. And in 1581, the first friars and soldiers arrived to, way, to what is today New Mexico. Now, if you look at this image, if you look at the image, you'll notice the prominence of the weapons and the figure in black with a white cross. This was the priest who accompanied Juan de Oñate, the Spanish conquistador, who first arrived in New Mexico to claim it for the Spanish. He crossed the Rio Grande, and then he founded the city of Santa Fe. However, he was not a very good leader of men, and in 1598, his men began to mutiny. Well, what remained of his conquering force, he brought to the town of Acoma, New Mexico. This is 1599 and brutally rep repressed the Pueblo Indians there. When the, Indi when the Indians of Acoma revolted, when they protested, Juan de Oñate had 800 of the Indians killed with Spanish cannons, forcing them, eventually, after a lot of death, to surrender to the Spaniards. Now, the way that the people, the way that he would keep these, these Indians from revolting again, what he did was he ordered to have the left foot cut off of every adult man. A terrible punishment for rebellion against the Spanish. Any future attempts at rebellion would have to learn the lessons of the failed Acoma revolt of 1599. Although about 400 years later, a statue of Juan de Añate in the 1900s would be vandalized by a group of people who had cut off the foot of the statue of the conquistador Juan de Juan de Nunez. In any case, New Mexico was a terrible, violent money pit, and most Spaniards wanted to leave. But the Franciscans, an order of monks in Spain who had come to the Americas to try and colonize and to try and convert the Native Americans to um, Christianity, was able to convince the Spaniards to keep a sort of skeleton crew present in New Mexico so the friars could stay and the royal treasury would pay for their presence there. The Catholic Church would remain and the premier institution for the colonization of New Mexico would be the mission. So the attempt here is to Hispanicize Native Americans and turn them into Catholics, right? This also allowed the Spanish to establish a foothold in the borderlands in Florida, in Texas, in areas that were eventually claimed by the French and sometimes the English, but also by the Spaniards. The way that the Spanish tried to establish their dominance in that region was by establishing a presence through missions. Priests who would train the Native Americans, teach them Spanish customs, Christianity, how to farm, and they would become the sort of shock troops of Spanish colonization in the New World. In any case, by, six, by, by 1680 or so, there were many, many, many missions, particularly in New Mexico.